If you ordered your Ram 2500, 3500, or chassis cab with the aux switches, then your truck should have come with an additional wiring kit, and this video is going to explain how to utilize those wires. The kit came with a set of instructions that are pretty minimal, and in fact, they basically redirect you to a website to go get more instructions. These instructions really only explain how to utilize the aux switches to provide power to the ports that are under the hood. It doesn't explain how to provide power to the cab or to the rear of the truck. And thanks to two people on the HD Rams forums, I was able to figure out how to wire power to the cab and to the rear of the truck. So I specifically want to shout out to Brutal and Iron Byron who were able to give more details on this. The kit also came with these additional wires here that are for things unrelated to the aux switches. So I'm going to just push those out of the way and we'll talk about those in another video. So let's imagine you want to use aux one to power some device near the front of your truck, like a light bar. What you do is you would open the hood, get in the engine compartment, and on the driver's side, near the firewall, high up on the engine compartment, close to the hood, you're going to find these two ports. One is a dark gray, and then the light gray, which is below the dark gray. And each of those aux power ports there has actually four smaller ports in it. The upper left one on the dark gray corresponds to aux 1, the lower left corresponds to aux 2, and so forth, according to this diagram. Notice that on the light gray connector, the upper right port is a ground that you can utilize, and the lower right port is a pass-through that goes back into the cab, and we'll talk about how to utilize that one later in the video. For the aux 1 example, you would locate the port on the dark gray connector that corresponds to aux 1, which is upper left, and the appropriate wire for that is the pink wire with the dark brown stripe. I've located the pink wire with the dark brown stripe. I could use any of these wires, but it's probably better to go ahead and follow the color scheme that they've given here. That way, if somebody else is trying to troubleshoot the system, they don't have to spend as much time trying to figure out which wires were used for which ports. Now that you understand the theory behind the wiring, let's go ahead and do an actual example under the hood. So this dark gray aux port right here controls aux one through four. The light gray one down here controls aux five and six and the pass through. I'm gonna remove the dark gray connector by pushing on this tab behind here pretty hard and then pulling on the plug. I believe my dark gray connector originally had this safety tab on it that you have to slide back to like that to remove the plug, but I think I accidentally lost the safety tab. So once you remove it, if you keep it in the same orientation, this upper left port here is going to be aux one. And I'm going to use some needle nose pliers to grab a hold of this little rubber plug here and pull it out. I removed the waterproof plug. And now we want to insert the pink wire with the brown stripe into the aux one port, but we have to do a little thing on the inside of the plug first. On the inside of the plug, there's this white retention clip and you have to use a small screwdriver to get underneath this little clip here and lift up on it and then pull on the white part to extract it from the gray part. Now the white part is protruding out away from the gray part, and this makes it possible to insert the wires into the ports. When you insert the wire, you'll notice that one side of the wire has a little hole in it, which is near my thumbnail right now. And that side needs to go down and, and it'll clip onto a little protrusion that's on the inside of the plug there. That keeps it from being able to back back out. I'm gonna push in on it and it clicked. Now it won't come out. Push the white clip back inside to latch. If you decide you need to remove one of the wires that you plugged in, you're going to have to loosen the white retaining clip as described earlier, and then between the wire and the white clip, recessed in the underneath the wire there is a little black tab that you're going to have to push away from the wire using a small screwdriver, and then simultaneously pull on the wire and it'll pull out of the plug. Plug it back in to the harness, splice in your wire 
into the pink wire with the brown stripe. The fuse box and the relays for all of the aux switches are over here. I removed the cover to the fuses and the relays, and I want to describe what each of those does because they're not in an obvious order. I printed out this sheet, I keep it in my truck, so you might think I'm a little bit crazy, but this way I don't have to try to look up stuff in the dark on the side of the road in the rain. I have a little folder that I keep all the important documentation in. But as you can see here, aux one fuse from the factory is a 40 amp. Aux two is a 40 amp. And then you'd expect, expect aux three to be next to aux two, but it's not. It's actually aux four and it's only a 25 amp. And then aux three, skip one, aux five, which is a 20 amp, skip one, aux six, which is a 40 amp. The run one is a 20, which we'll, we'll talk about that when we describe later how to take advantage of the pass-through port a little bit more. You can switch these fuses out with other fuses. These are a low-profile M-type fuse. If you do switch out any of the fuses, you need to keep a couple of things in mind. The first one is that each fuse dictates the maximum electricity that can be sent through that wire without blowing the fuse, but you can't run it at that amperage continuously. So you have to, the maximum allowable continuous amperage is shown in this table here. If you have a 20 amp fuse, the maximum allowable continuous amperage is 14 amps. If you have a 25 amp fuse, the maximum allowable continuous amperage is 17.5 amps. And if you have a 40 amp fuse, the maximum allowable amperage is 28 amps. Independent of the individual limitations on amperage, there is a combined limitation. You can only have a total of 225 amps for all the aux switches, the run, and the battery. The maximum fuse rating for any individual slot is 40 amps. The maximum continuous amperage draw for the entire system is 135 amps. Now I want to describe what the pass-through port does, which is the lower right port on the light gray connector. So what it does is that actually goes back into the cab to a light gray connector that's under the dashboard behind the light switch. I'll show that in a minute, but it currently has nothing plugged into it. So if you want to make it so that an aux switch can power something inside the cab, what you would do is you would pick one of your aux ports and in this example, I'm using aux six, which is the lower left port on the light gray connector. And you would jumper the aux six port into the pass-through port. So you would need to use two of, two of your clips and then splice them together. And that way, when you push the aux six button, it's gonna put power back in to the cab. So what is this gray jumper that comes in the wiring kit? Well, if we turn it around and we look at the back, the upper left port is port number one. The upper right port is port number three. The lower port on the left is port number four. And the lower right is port number six. Port number one goes to the back of the truck for ignition power. Port number two is blank. Port number three comes from the battery. So it's battery power, even when the truck is off. Port number four is battery power that goes to the back of the truck. Port number five is a the pass-through wire that comes from the lower right port on the light gray aux expansion port under the hood. And then port number six there is an incoming wire for ignition power. So if you need ignition power, you would just tap into the lower right wire that comes out there, the pink and orange wire on the lower right, port six. If you needed battery power, you would tap into the upper right wire. Now, from the factory, ports three and four are jumpered together and ports one and six are jumpered together. That's what provides battery power and ignition power to the back of the truck. How can we use this harness here to get power from an aux button inside the cab? What you would do is you'd pick an aux port that you want to use. Let's say aux one, which will be the upper left port on the dark gray connector under the hood. You would tap a wire into that uh, port, and then you would jumper it over to the lower right port on the light gray connector, which is the pass-through port. 
And that way, when you push the aux one button, it's gonna send power out to the dark gray connector, out port one, back in on the lower right pass-through port of the light gray connector, and it will come out this violet and yellow wire here. One disadvantage of the way that RAM has designed this is there is no way from the factory to really wire multiple aux switches inside the cab without drilling a hole through the firewall. Now it's time to show you where to plug in this gray jumper. Just behind the emergency brake pedal here, up just to the right of the bracket that holds the emergency brake, back in that dark area back there, there's actually a gray connector that this will fit into. There's only one back there that it'll fit into. I do want to mention that I actually haven't found the blunt cut wires that are mentioned in the wiring diagram that should be located at the driver's side rear bumper. I've looked everywhere for the wires and I haven't been able to find them. I hope somebody can point to me where these wires are actually located. I did find a picture on the hdrams.com forums that shows some blunt cut wires near the spare tire, but I looked at my truck and I don't have the same wires. I, I do have one wire that appears to be blunt cut there, and that's not the wires that I expected to find because there should be at least two wires coming from the gray port under the dashboard. So now you understand how to configure the wiring so that you can have power under the hood or in the cab or at the rear of the truck. What do you do next? Well, you've got to actually configure the button behavior. And there's really three settings that you need to change for each button. And the way you change those settings is you go into the commercial settings system in the dashboard. And you're gonna use the up and down and left and right arrows on the steering wheel to navigate until you find the commercial settings option. Once you find the commercial settings option, you'll use the right arrow to begin the configuration but you have to enter a pin code. I believe the default pin code for the truck is either 0000 or 1234. But if those don't work for you and you don't know the pin code, you're gonna to have to actually contact the dealership to get a new pin code. Once you've entered the pin code, you're at the commercial settings main menu and you wanna select the aux switches option with the right arrow. And now we're gonna use aux one as an example. So I'm gonna select the right arrow to enable aux one. And the three settings that we're gonna configure here are the type, the power source, and the last state. For the type, there's two types, latching and momentary. If you select latching, that's gonna behave like a household light switch. When you turn the switch on and release the button, power is gonna be supplied to the electronic component until you push the button again. If you choose momentary, the behavior is going to be that it will supply electricity to the component as long as you hold the button down. For the power source option, there's two types, battery and ignition. Ignition means when the truck is running, electricity will be supplied to the component. And you would wanna use that for things like a radar detector or a dash camera. If you select battery, then electricity will be supplied to the component as long as the truck has battery power. That would be for something like an alarm system. I wouldn't want to use this for a dash camera because it will drain the battery. The last state setting has two options, on and off. On means the truck is going to remember the state of the aux button when you turn off the truck. For example, if aux one is on when I turn off the truck, when I turn the truck on again, the aux one button will be turned on automatically for me. If the last state setting is set to off, when I turn off the truck and turn it back on, aux one will be off no matter the previous state of the button. That concludes the video. I hope you learned how to power devices near the hood, in the cab, and at the rear of the truck, assuming you can find the blunt cut wires that are mentioned in the wiring diagram.